Um, hello everyone and thanks so much for coming to this event. Um, as Chris said, I'm Rosa Umpagorn. I'm an advanced nurse practitioner in the Homeless Health Service, Central London Community Healthcare NHS Trust. And I'm very proud uh, to launch these guidelines with the LNM today. So yeah, for the, set, the next 15 minutes, um, I'm gonna give you some background about why and how the guidelines were developed and talk to you about um, what we've included in them. So street outreach aims to bring an approachable face of healthcare directly to people sleeping rough. The standards published by the Faculty for Homeless and Inclusion Health state that specialist primary care services should provide street outreach and many services around the UK do provide it but previously there has been no guidance detailing how to deliver it. My own experience in our nurse-led service in Westminster was that there were large numbers of people sleeping rough in our area and similarly to your patients or clients these, pa these people face huge health inequalities with a high prevalence of physical and mental illness and substance misuse, being much more likely to die early and often from treatable conditions and experiencing multiple barriers to accessing healthcare. For people sleeping rough in Westminster, they were even excluded from our own clinics and day centres due to door policies that we didn't have any control over. That meant that people weren't able to enter the buildings where we had our clinics if they didn't comply with certain engagement criteria. So we knew we needed to do street outreach, but we were unsure exactly how to provide it. And as we were starting out, we really wished we had some guidelines to follow. Prompted by this need for effective street outreach in our area, I embarked on a research project and feeling that it was essential that people with lived experience were involved with the design of the service, I focused on exploring their perceptions. I carried out a qualitative description study using semi-structured interviews and thematic analysis to explore perceptions of health-related street outreach. My findings were that people with experience of sleeping rough talked about shame and loneliness and said they felt that health-related street outreach could offer them a human connection, which could make them feel cared for and less isolated. They also gave many examples of access barriers to healthcare, including fatigue, having to carry heavy baggage and a lack of knowledge about services or their rights to healthcare. They felt that healthcare workers visiting them on the street could act as a bridge that overcame these barriers. Importantly, people with experience of sleeping rough also defined a recommended approach to health-related street outreach, detailing what they felt was acceptable and what was not acceptable to them. My research was published in the Journal of Advanced Nursing in 2019, and in the conclusion I made a recommendation for some national guidelines for health-related street outreach. Following on from this research, I also consulted health and social care workers who provide street outreach in many lo locations around the UK. Through the LNM, we sent out questionnaires and received answers from 30 health and social care workers in several boroughs of London and Edinburgh, Glasgow, Leeds, Bradford, Swansea and Bournemouth. In the questionnaire, we asked for a description of the health related street outreach provided by services they worked in or in partnership with, what they felt worked well and what they would recommend as an approach, what they felt didn't work well and wouldn't recommend, and what items should be provided to people seen on the street. I followed up these questionnaires with phone calls, visits and meetings to find out more about what people's roles were and how their services worked. Through this process, we collected lots of best practice examples and innovative ideas that people were already using. Casey Baxter, clinical nurse specialist at Great Chapel Street and I also ran a workshop at the LNM conference in 2018, where we presented the research findings and asked 25 healthcare workers, housing outreach workers and peer advocates the same questions as in the questionnaires. 
The research and consultation findings are what we have used to develop these national guidelines. They're now available to read and download from the LNM website, and we will also order some printed copies, which we hope to give out when it is possible to arrange events and conferences that we can attend in person again. Chris Torrey, the LNM Network Development Manager, co-authored the guidelines, and we were given a grant by the Burdett Trust to enable us to complete them. We want to say a big thank you to the Burdett Trust and the other organisations who support the LNM, NHS England and the London Housing Foundation. We also want to say thank you very much to the organisations who have endorsed the guidelines, Pathway, Queen's Nursing Institute and the Royal College of Nursing. The guidelines aim to assist services to review their existing street outreach or to plan new projects. And we've included a helpful section by Sam Dorney Smith and Jane Cook on how to get a street outreach service commissioned. As the nature of homelessness and the demographics and needs of people sleeping rough differ widely across locations, the guidelines are not a prescriptive one size fits all. They're designed to be a flexible tool that is applicable to services across the UK. They're structured into five sections. Why, which details the reasons to provide health-related street outreach. Who, which looks at who can provide health-related street outreach. Although professional backgrounds may, might differ, there are common skills and recommended education and training. This section also focuses on partnership work. When and where, which covers the timings and locations of street outreach. How, which looks at the approach to street outreach and what, which discusses items to provide to people on the street. We've included quotes from the research participants so that the voices of people with lived experience can directly influence practice. And the reasons to provide health-related street outreach, the recommended approach and items to provide on the street are all based on the opinions of people with experience of sleeping rough. We've included case studies from several different services around the UK, which illustrate the effectiveness of health related street outreach and the elements that are involved, including multidisciplinary work, safeguarding, assessing mental capacity and clinical interventions and prescribing on the street. One of our patients in Westminster, who I'll call Ian, was seen regularly in Leicester Square but begging to fund his drug dependency. Ian had not been registered with a GP for years and did not attend any day centres. He had a history of autism, PTSD and personality disorder, and both his mental and physical health were deteriorating rapidly. Over several months, street outreach nurses worked in partnership with the housing outreach team to provide wound care and prescribe antibiotics for his recurrent infections to refer him to community and hospital-based mental health services and to the drug support service and support him to reconnect with his family. When Ian was living with his sister and receiving treatment for his drug dependency, he was able to give his thoughts about the health-related street outreach service he had received. The fact the nurses always came to find me, it really surprised me. They looked at the complex life I was living and tried to meet my needs. I was using so much heroin and crack, I often felt invincible. They never came to force me off the streets. They never pushed me into doing anything I didn't feel comfortable with. I knew when I was ready, they would be there. They became a stable element in my life when my life was unstable. The guidelines also include best practice exemplars from London, Hastings, Swansea, Edinburgh and Glasgow and West Suffolk. We're lucky enough to have three of these street outreach practitioners here today to present. Bean, outreach specialist from Find and Treat's Pan London service. Jan, clinical nurse specialist from Healthcare for Homeless People in Swansea. And Lauren, advanced clinical pharmacist from Edinburgh. The how section is the largest part of the guidelines and offers practical advice on how to deliver health related street outreach. This includes 
interpersonal approach strategies that are recommended or not recommended by people with experience of sleeping rough and health and social care workers. Techniques to support communication on the street, contributed by Lee Andrews, speech and language therapist with a special interest in working with people with brain injury. A shift planning section, which recommends a balance of targeted and opportunistic work and discusses the advantages of street outreach on foot, by bicycle or in vans. Personal safety considerations and tips to improve staff well-being as street outreach can be physically tiring, stressful and emotionally distressing. Examples of interventions that can be provided on the street. These are for services to apply as appropriate to them, depending on the design of their street outreach and the scope of practice of their staff. The important subject of safeguarding people during street outreach. Fiona will be discussing this more after the break. And finally, record keeping and data, which is often a challenge for street outreach, but is essential for continuity of care and demonstrating the impact of the work. The health inclusion team, Guys and St Thomas's NHS Trust, kindly contributed suggestions for key performance indicators. As health-related street outreach is very different from work within a clinic or hospital environment, the feedback from new practitioners is they often feel underprepared or have lots of questions. We're hoping the guidelines will provide a, a helpful resource, but we're also planning to create an e-learning module for healthcare workers who are new to street outreach and possibly homeless healthcare, hoping that this module could form part of a new staff member's induction. We're basing the e-learning on the guidelines, aiming to include a range of interactive learning opportunities and to host it somewhere where it will be freely accessible to anyone that needs it. The LNM will keep you updated with our progress. I've been really lucky to meet and talk to so many healthcare workers providing street outreach around the UK. And the LNM and Q&I wants to maintain these links between services and create new ones enable people to get support and advice from other professionals doing similar roles. There is a plan for a new street outreach network with the first meeting on Tuesday the 23rd of March at 3pm. If you would like to join then please contact Sam or Kendra whose email addresses are on the slide. I will also be involved with this uh, when I return from maternity leave. Please also attend the LNM bi-monthly meetings and events, which are all virtual at the moment, but hopefully there'll be another conference in the not too distant future that we can all go to in person. If you'd like to give any feedback about the guidelines or request contact information for the services featured in them, then please email the LNM. Finally, I'd just like to encourage you to read the guidelines and apply whatever is useful to your service. Whether you want to review the street outreach you already provide or start a new project. Our street outreach service, Westminster Street Nurse, definitely didn't happen overnight and is still a work in progress as we constantly aim to improve and adapt to the ever-changing landscape the pandemic has given us. I really hope the guidelines will be a helpful resource for you to use in this process too. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>